I'm going to show you how to make birch tree resist paintings with salt sprinkle, which add this really cool texture effect in the sky. So to start, you are going to need a piece of watercolor paper and masking tape and a pencil. And that's all you will need the first day. You won't need paint or anything else yet. I'm going to start by writing my name down on the bottom. And I want to make a border. I'm actually going to turn my paper like this so you can see the whole paper. I want to tape off a border, like a picture frame, with the masking tape. So I'm going to pull off a piece of the tape, try to measure the length of my paper. I'm going to press my thumb in hard into the tape and then pull my other hand close to rip it like this. Now, this is going to seem really strange what I'm about to do. This tape is super sticky and if I were just to stick it right to the paper, later on I'm going to be pulling it off and it's going to rip up the paper if it's too sticky. So I want to stick this tape to my leg. So here's my leg. I'm going to stick it to my leg and then I'm going to pull it up. You're actually probably going to see some of the fibers from my pants, but now I'm going to put it down onto the paper and it will still stick but it won't be as sticky. So I'm going to do that on all four sides. Okay, now I have masked off a border. This is why it's called masking tape, because you can mask off areas of the paper that you do not want to get covered with paint, or mask off wall parts of the wall if you're painting your wall. So I now want to make some trees, and you don't have to use the tape to make trees. You could really mask off anything that you want, but know that wherever you put down tape, the paper will not be painted. So basically you're protecting the paper from the paint like you would protect your skin from the sun with sunblock. This tape works the same way. So it's blocking the paper from the paint. So if I wanted to make some trees, I'm going to pull off the length that I want. Again, come really close to the end, push down and rip. Stick it to my leg and put up a vertical tree trunk. If I want to do some branches, I might pinch up at the top and rip down vertically. I could just stick those there until I need them to make, to make smaller branches. So then, after sticking these to my legs, I'll decide where I want to put my branches. And angle them up. It's really important that the tape is stuck all the way down to the paper. That way, no water can, and paint can creep in underneath. So you're just kind of shaping this tape however you would like. Just kind of talking to your artwork, deciding where each branch wants to go. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I want to do anything else there. So I might use some of this other tape to kind of tape off a horizon line where the ground meets the sky. Still sticking the tape to my legs. And this can look, oh, did you catch that? I forgot to stick that to my leg. If I wanted to tape off maybe a moon, I could do that. 
use the tape to kind of piece together the shape of a moon in the sky or sun. Your call. You are the artist. That is a very blocky moon. The next step is going to be to get your paint. So you could get a watercolor tray, you could get the temper cake tray, you could even get one of these. Ask me permission if you would like to try using our liquid marker, which is the paint that we have been making from our dried up markers that have been soaking. Um, if you'd like to try the liquid marker, I will get you one of these trays and you will squirt just a little bit into the bottom. Eventually we have plastic egg cartons that will work really well for this. So I am going to be just painting with cool colors because my second graders are learning about cool colors and warm colors and I want to count this for my warm color cool color challenge. So I'm just going to be doing a cool color palette. So what I want to do, regardless of what kind of paint I'm using, the liquid marker, the temper cake, or the watercolor, I'm going to make sure that I have a really wet wash of paint. And I'm going to paint it on my paper. Just paint directly over the tape. Because I push the tape down really hard, the paint's not going to soak underneath. And this liquid marker is actually working really well. Now, to do the cool effect with the salt, you want to make sure that you use the salt when the paint is shiny. I just wanted to mix in some purple here into my sky. Hello. So now I'm going to... Okay. Now I'm going to... Oh, thank you. I just got a valentine. Thank you so much. It's going to be in my video. Happy Valentine's Day. Now I'm going to pinch the salt and I'm going to sprinkle it into the watercolor where it's wet. I think the shininess went away. So I'm going to actually get it a little bit more wet. Do you see how it's shinier over there? That's how wet I want it to be when I sprinkle the salt. You don't want to paint your whole paper and then do the salt because the paint will be dry by then. So you really want to wait, or really want to do it in sections. Mix the colors that you want, paint it on. When it's shiny, then sprinkle the salt. Be careful not to go in and rub where you've already sprinkled the salt because that will ruin the cool effect. You want the salt to just stick into the paint, soak until the next class when you can rub it off. So um, I'm just going to do a little bit down here. I'm getting some of this bluish white for kind of a, a little snowy hill. And then I'm going to sprinkle more salt into that. Okay, so let's fast forward ahead. Um, this one, I have a little bit more painted. Um, and the salt has been drying actually for I think a year now <laughs> but you'll be waiting till next the next week um, and at that point once let's just pretend that this is all painted in it's all covered in um, once it's dry you get to pull the tape off and this part's really fun so I'm just gonna pick up the tape and pull it and if you've taped your or stuck your tape to your leg it shouldn't rip the paper very much if it starts ripping, come at it from the other angle and pull it down this way. And I'm now revealing my tree. Oh, see, it ripped the paper. Don't panic. It's okay. You can see how much cooler it would look if I had actually finished. Um, this tree obviously isn't going to look like anything because there's no paint around it. Um, and the border won't look like anything either. But you will be pulling off all of the tape. And then you're going to get a paper towel and you are going to crumple it up in a ball and rub in little circles. Once the salt is all off, you can carry uh, your paper to the trash can and tap it into the trash can. And then you're really able to see the cool effect that the salt has on the watercolor. It makes it look like snow.
So you can have fun doing this. Um, here's a, the finished one again. It doesn't have to be birch trees. It doesn't have to be cool colors. It could be warm colors. It could be a summer scene. It could be outer space. It could be anywhere you want with whatever color palette you want. Have fun with this and explore the power that the tape has to block the paint from painting the paper. Enjoy!